Hey folks, welcome back, my name's Neil. And for the last 55 days, I've been working on my dream garden tractor build. It's my John Deere 318. And what I've done is I've committed to working on this every day, no matter how little or how much I can get done. And so far it's really helped me to move this project along. So I'm up to the point where I've had some parts shipped off to sandblasting and I'm gonna get those back and just keep moving this thing along. My goal for this video is to get over the hump because so far all I've been doing is tearing this tractor apart. I wanna to get to the point where I'm putting it back together. So if you'll stick around, hopefully we can get there together. Dig drive, DIY. Day 56 and I got all my stuff back from the sandblasters. You know, it's not perfect, but they were cheap and I'll still need to sand out some of this stuff. Actually, I found a few little defects because of the sandblasting, but we'll get it cleaned up and move on. Hey, it's day 58. I don't feel like I've quite got to the peak of the hill yet. I don't feel like we're in the home stretch, but we're getting close. Once I start reassembly, I feel like we're over the hill, but I'm looking at all this extra stuff on here. This is for the mower deck lift. I don't think this tractor is ever gonna have a mower deck mounted. These are for the brakes, and I'm thinking how hard this is gonna be to try to paint this. Tonight, I'm just gonna strip more of this stuff off the frame. I think I can remove this stuff and get it out of here. That'll just make life so much easier to do this painting. You know, I don't wanna do it, but a little time now might save me a little time later. Plus I'll get a better end result. I'm having dueling impacts with Watch West work up there. He's an actual mechanic. If you wanna watch a real mechanic, Watch West work. Well, I couldn't get those snap rings off on the inside. I'm gonna to have to ask to borrow or buy some more, some different snap ring pliers to get those big snap rings off. So much of me wants to be in a hurry and just paint it despite all that stuff being in the way, but this will make it much easier to prep and much easier to paint without all that in the way. So that's the right thing to do. I just hate to take the time to do it. Now I gotta paint all those parts individually, but. All right, it is day 59. My goal is to really Really, I wanna paint this weekend. I'm taking and stripping all the stuff off the frame so I can, I can work and paint on the frame. I'm just gonna make this easier to paint. All this dangly hanging stuff. So I'm gonna see if I can get these little arms off of the three-point hitch. I'm probably gonna take this off too, but I need to get these hoses. I need to get a bracket built for these hoses, so. It's day 60. Need about five inches. Well, I've been dreading doing that for a while. I'm not sure why. It took a little bit, but this little piece here will make it a lot easier to hook up those rear hydraulics. So I'll paint it separately and then we'll assemble it all together. So that was a good day. Good evening. All right, it is day 61. And I just got a really awesome comment on the last video I made for this tractor. A local friend of mine who watches the videos said that he's got access to a blaster and he could blast some of my small parts if I wanted him to. So. I think I'm gonna take him up on it. So since I'm painting the frame a different color, I think it'll be so much easier to, to try to paint these parts if they were hanging up and I could move them around. So I'm just gonna take the three point hitch off and all the pieces and parts. Funny enough, I used to call this big handled ratchet Bertha. Way back when it was my big half inch drive ratchet. It's still my big half inch drive ratchet. Well, I am super tickled to be getting these parts blasted. So thanks a lot, Ryan, for taking that on for me. I really appreciate it. If I get this stuff back, I'm gonna be real close to, to being ready to paint. Look at that, that was quick and easy, sandblasted parts. Thanks to that guy. <laughs> thanks a lot, Ryan, no problem. These were dirty too, it just, it like cleans them perfect. Oh yeah, it just blasts it right off. They look so perfect. 
There, I got day, what's today, 62? Yeah. Day 62, and I, I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> All right, it is day 63 and I got all these parts back from Ryan that sandblasted them for me. And they're just raw steel right now. So I really wanna get them primed up before they can rust because they will rust quickly. So I'm just gonna use some of this, this surface cleaner. I've had this cleans easy for a long time. What I do is I like to wipe it on with one rag and then I'll wipe it off with another rag, let it evaporate for just a few minutes. And then I'm just gonna shoot a little primer real quick in here. This weekend's supposed to be nice weather. So I'm hoping I can get outside and do a little painting and primer in this weekend outdoors. Well, I think you get the gist of how this is gonna go. This is drying up real fast. I'll flip it over, open the door, get some ventilation. And it is day 64 and it's nice outside. I'm gonna try to get this thing out or at least get it ready to go out. Tomorrow's supposed to be nice too. I'm gonna try to get this up on a pallet so I can make it easier to paint. You need about nine inches. Got my blueprint, now I need to do a little carpentry work. Okay, got that all built up. We'll see if that works. Normally I get really impatient when it comes to rigging stuff up to pick it up. You know, the best option is just to slide the forks under something and lift it up. And if you can't do that, you wanna just wrap a chain around it and grab a hold of something. But I kinda of wanna think this through because when I set it back down, hopefully, or when I pick it back up the second time, it's gonna be painted. I wanna be able to pick it up and not scratch the paint all up. So I'm trying to come up with a way that I can rig it and not have it twist around on me. So I'm gonna try this. I have an idea found this concrete form stake. That'll fit in there like that. All right, now we'll see if it'll pick it up. Whoa, yeah, feels good. All right, well, it is day 65 already. Almost a full 24 hours since I set this down on this pallet. The day has gotten away from me today, but I wanna get these wheels off and take a look at this. Maybe I'll just pick it up, take it outside, see what it looks like in the sunlight. I don't know. I got a, maybe an hour to work on it. Still need to get this stupid snap ring off of this motor deck hanger. Oh, I think I, oh yeah, I got it. Look at that. I got it with the straight instead of the 90 degree. Oh, I think I got it. I'll keep these parts. And if All I right. decide to put an order deck on, I can put these back on. All right, well that actually looks pretty good. I got a few more things I can do. I need to straighten out that brake pedal. That's about the last thing to do on the frame, but I do want to at least move it and get it situated so it's out of the way in case I need this bay in a hurry. I don't have this thing sitting here, so I got a few more minutes, get it moved over. And then you know what? It's time for supper and the Super Bowl. I don't know if you know that I'm not much of a sports guy, but I do enjoy watching the Super Bowl every year for some reason. I like the chicken wings. It is day 66, and I must admit, this project is wearing on me. I need to be going downhill instead of still trying to peak, you know what I mean? But I need to get these uh, brakes fixed up. Part of what's got me upset is it looks like the axle seals are leaking now, and they weren't leaking before. You know, actually they started leaking when one of the hoses that's on top of the transmission, there's a vent hose that goes from the transmission goes through the sight glass and it goes down below that hose got broke the other day which i think possibly it got air in it and once it got air it started leaking because it never leaked before but now it's leaking so now i'm worried about that i'm ready for this project to be moved along so i'm going to take out a little frustration on this brake stop pin that's bent so it should line up straight with that and it's let my pedals overextend a bit so bent back this way put your earmuffs on That's bending pretty easy. All right, this brake pedal is just tweaked a little bit. Grabbed my biggest crescent wrench. I don't know, maybe I can... Oh, I did bend it. That's straight, all right. Ha, huh. maybe I can get this one lined up, huh? So these should line up nice and straight with each other. 
I don't know if I can get it straight without moving the tractor around too much. That's where they'll be in the normal rest position. So that's pretty good. That wasn't as bad as I thought. Well, they're not absolutely perfect, but you know, I was sitting here telling myself if I wasn't putting this on YouTube, I'd call this good enough and it was straight enough for me. It is day 67 and today's work on the tractor is gonna take place remotely. So we're gonna see if I can get some axle seals for that tractor. I didn't spend any time looking it up today online and trying to research it. Is John Deere your favorite store like it is mine? I'm not gonna film in there because I feel weird. This is our local store and everybody knows who everybody is. So, you know, I'll film when we come back out if we have any parts, but they won't have them in stock. Can you believe it? They had two in stock. Boy, they are proud of those too, you know what? So you gonna put them in for me? <laughs> You'll help? All right, good. All right, we'll head home. It is day 67 and I am dreading this like crazy. Like I mentioned, this axle seal is leaking. It's inbound here inside. If I don't fix it, I think I'm always gonna regret it because everywhere I park this tractor now, you can see a little spot where the oil leaks out onto the tire and then the tread mark leaves a little spot on the floor. So I've got three or four little spots on the floor now. So I was expecting to have to take the entire transmission and differential and rear end out of this. I've done it before. It's kind of a pain. You got to break all these lines, but according to the book, you should be able to just pull each side out. Hopefully there's enough clearance. If I leave the axle shaft intact that I can get it out. So I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. First things first, I got to drain the oil out. You have to remove these two bolts. You got to bend these little metal tabs down. Right, well this whole axle tube assembly unbolts with six bolts here from the differential. And I'm hoping I can take the whole thing off as one without removing the axle shaft from inside the tube. The only hang up is gonna be is if I don't have enough movement here before the axle comes out of the differential. So, oh, it's gonna hit the, it's hitting the frame. All right, my options are to Remove the axle shaft where you have to take the brake drums off and this backing plate. And option two is to remove the whole rear end, get the whole thing out of there. And then it would be admittedly easier to work on it too. I could disassemble it and reassemble it on the bench and I have to work down here on my knees. Plus, if I take it all apart, that I could probably paint this better, clean it up better. <sighs> it's a project that keeps on giving. Everything I've got leaks, so why am I worried about that? Okay, I am removing the linkage bolt on the bottom of that hydrostatic arm connector right there. Couple hydraulic lines here on top. Knock the whole thing off the blocks. Vent tube needs disconnected. There we go. All right. right here on these brake rods. No, no. Don't pinch my hand. The brunt boots took the brunt of it. I think I had a steel toe. You know, I have a plan for tomorrow. During lunch, I'm gonna run into town and I'm gonna pick up a Harbor Freight engine hoist and I think that'll help reassemble things. Cause I need to be able to pick that up and steady it. I gotta put the engine back in, and although I don't wanna have to store one 99% of the time, I think it'll be a good move. So it is about 20 after midnight, which means I got two days marked off in one. It's day 68 now, technically, but uh, that's enough for today. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Now I had to come to the big city. So it's actually day 69 though. But I think this will make things a lot easier on that tractor. So I like that they fold up. They never folded up before and they were really a pain to store. So how can you afford not to have these on hand? 11 bucks for all these. I spent more money than I thought I would at Harbor Freight, but 
it's all stuff I can use, so no harm. Arbor Freight Special. All right, a continuation of day 69. The girls are finally in bed. I've got all my other chores done. It's about 10 o'clock and I want to get this engine hoist shop crane put together and then I'll have it to use for the rest of the project, which I think will be very helpful. So, okay, no time like the present. Hopefully this isn't too tough. All right, well, I guess that's progress. It's up here where I can work on it and I got a hoist for heavy lifting in the future. I think I'm gonna start working on that frame. I'm gonna paint it while the rear end's out of it. So I'm gonna maybe turn my direction that way. I don't know, I'll probably take this apart tomorrow night. We'll see, we'll see how time goes. It's day 70, tonight's a slow night. It's a Friday night, had to watch a movie. Didn't get a lot done, but I, I did get a new shipment. It's a different style of Fomoto valve. It's got an O-ring on the back side, and I'm hoping that this will seal up against the engine block and work for me. Ugh, it's still not gonna work. Well, I'm beginning to think they don't offer a solution for this. The housing is hitting that recess. Ah, oh, man. Well, shoot, it's back to the drawing board on that one. Well, it's day 71, and I finally had a little bit more of a productive day. I started things out today trying to get the frame ready for primer, and I knew it was gonna be a lot of work. So even though I didn't originally think I was gonna do this, I started out by removing the front axle. I thought, what the heck, it's gonna be easier to get it cleaned up. I can do a better job of painting the frame, better job of painting the axle if I just yank it out of there. Then I took off the brake pedal pads, kind of got everything tucked away and cleaned up. Essentially, I just got the frame as ready as I could before I took it outside. Cause I didn't want to do a lot of grinding and paint and old dirt removal inside my shop. I got the frame all secured down to the pallet, carried it outside and then got to work. Originally I wasn't going to go to this much trouble and work, but things have kind of escalated and I decided to try to remove most of the paint off of any service that was actually gonna be seen while the tractor's in regular use. So that means the side of the frames, the front part. I wanna be able to paint the front axle because as you're gonna see, I'm not just gonna repaint all this black. I want it to be able to, to be a little bit different, have a little contrast, and therefore I wanna make sure I do a good job prepping for the paint. So I got everything wire wheeled as best I could, and then the parts that I couldn't reach or access, I used some sandpaper, and got off more debris. And then where I couldn't get to the sandpaper, I used a scuff pad. And then once I was done removing all the loose paint and scuffing it up, I went ahead and used the surface cleaner and I wiped it down two times. The first time I went through and I really tried to do some heavy degreasing and get rid of as much dirt and grime as I could. Then the second time through was more of a cleaner coat and everything's looking really good right now. I spent the whole afternoon outside listening to a podcast, getting things prepped. And I brought it in here into this barn and now I'm going to do a little primer in. It's about 50 degrees outside, so it should be fine. That's what's up next. Primer. I'll mask some of this off. This stuff cleaned up really good. It's finally time to lay down some primer. This feels like a big step to me. Well, that definitely feels good to have done. That's a step in the right direction. That's a full day for me. Well, I call four or five hours a full day working on this. We'll see what comes up tomorrow. <laughs> well, it is day 72. I got my grubby, dirty clothes on. I need to get this thing opened up and see if I can fix those seals because I'm hoping to be assembling here very soon. Ooh. I'm not gonna be able to do that without this. And I gotta get this fixed and cleaned up and painted, so. I don't necessarily see anything. You know what? I can kind of tell that seal is oblong. Pretty hard too. Okay, we'll see if I can get that one out and put this one in. Here's a little slide hammer that I have with a little set of jaws on the end. I'm just pulling on the rubber. I need, let's see, I need a different setup here. I can't get any of the jaws that I have to stay in there and not just catch on the rubber. They all just want to I suppose I could try to pull the rubber out. That'll be a pain. So I'm gonna think outside the box and try something different. Pull the screw out. 
So I have this metric bolt with some washers and maybe if I stick it through there, I can kind of offset it. <laughs> Thread this on there. It's moved. There we go. These are tricky to get in. And I make a seal installer that goes on there and pushes that on in there real nice. So since I don't have the little seal installer, I'm going to use a socket. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit bigger hammer. I'm gonna put a little petroleum jelly on there. Give it a little initial lubrication. All right. Hopefully that seals it up. I'm just gonna rinse and repeat on the other side. I shouldn't have as much trouble. All right, I got both sides done. The first side took probably 45 minutes to an hour. This side took less than 15 minutes when I got it all figured out. That's just the way it goes. So I just hope like crazy that they hold and they don't leak. Time will tell. I'm not gonna know until I put it in there. Got something good accomplished tonight too. So we'll see what the next day brings. They say you gotta strike while the iron is hot. Well today, not exactly hot, but warm enough to paint. It's day 73, just got home from work, and I'm gonna try to get this done. I'm gonna put one coat down on this. I already kind of felt it. It feels really good and smooth. I'm not even gonna sand it or mess with it. I'm gonna paint the main part of the frame, and then I'll come back later and do some of the detail work, like the steering column. I'm not, I haven't decided on that, but. Let's get some paint on it. I'll start on the inside of the frame. It, I think it looks pretty cool with it, just this primer, black, flat black. I should have chose a different primer color. I didn't realize how close they'd be. You want to kind of choose a primer color that's close so that if you don't do a perfect paint job, you know, it's harder to tell where you missed. It's the hardest to paint around the stuff that's got a lot of intricate detail because you're trying to get all the nooks and crannies and before you know it, you got too much paint behind it and it's running. You want it to be as wet as possible looking without running. I'm gonna pick this up and go get more parts. It's just amazing the amount of work you put in to get to this point of preparation, anticipation, anxiety, and it's all over in like 40 minutes. Don't land in the paint. All right, I feel good about that. That's an accomplishment. Now I might be at the top of the hill. We still got the body panels to paint, so that's a big one. I haven't went over yet, but we're getting to the top. Okay. Well, it is day 74. I stopped by tonight and made it official. $200 in John Deere paint for a, for a garden tractor. So yeah, it was expensive, but all things considered, it was cheaper than actually the Martin Cedar paint at Napa. So we're gonna go with John Deere paint. Anybody could go buy it. And what a difference a day makes because yesterday it was nice and sunny and warm and I got all this painting done and tonight it's windy and cold and I'm not gonna be able to work outside, which is a real bummer because I just need to do the second coat on those three point parts and I'd be waiting on that to dry to put it back together. Now I'm gonna do what I say I don't like to do, which is painting inside my shop. But if I wanna move this timeline along, I'm gonna have to do it. All right, I got one good coat on that. This here is what I wanted to look at. So I don't know if you can see it in the light, but this turned out kind of rough looking. It's not terrible, but it's not smooth. I like it to look shiny and smooth. And this is gonna be one of the exposed areas. Can you tell how it's kind of rough looking? I thought about repainting this part right here. 
I don't know if I should or not. Maybe I should leave it be. Hopefully it's not too soft. Plus it's got a big drip right here. I'm gonna try to sand out. First coat, and on the first coat, you don't want it to be too thick. You wanna get it sticky so that you can really lay it down on the next coat. Okay, we'll let that tack up. Okay, coat number two. You put this one on a little bit heavier and I want it to look wet the whole time. So I'm using the light to help me see that it's consistent and even. Can you tell the difference between before and after? In my opinion, the most satisfying part of any paint job is the mask removal. The tape removal, paper removal. Let's see what it looks like. I think for sure I'm going to paint this column gray. I didn't want to do it with the rest here, but it's looking pretty good. Well, I'm really happy I decided to redo that. It was worth it. a little bit of effort. It's shinier. It'll look better. That's the most exposed thing. Got those other parts painted. We're just that much closer to start putting this thing back together. Well, it's day 75 and I think today's the day. If I can get one part put back on it, then I feel like we might be cresting the hill. There's still plenty of work to do, but this bolt, this is going to signify the beginning of the end. A little grease. So the first thing I would like to do is to get this front axle back in this chassis because I wanna do some work with the front rims and tires. I wanna make sure the rims and tires are gonna fit and that I don't have to modify anything. So I think this is gonna be the first step to get this thing back on its wheels. And hopefully I can lift that up in there and stick the bolt in because it's pretty easy to put back together if I can hold it and do it. Now, I remember when I took this out, I bench pressed it. So it might as well be what I do this time. There you have it, folks. I hit my goal for this video. I've officially started to reassemble this tractor, which means I think this is a good place to end this for now. I know it's been a long way. We covered almost 20 days in this video. So I wanna thank you so much for hanging in there with me. I know this is a slow moving project and I'm only working on it in my spare time, but we're getting there. On the bright side, what this means is that the next video will be all about me putting this back together. We're probably gonna have to shoot some paint too, eventually. We'll do that next time. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you liked it. If I'm lucky, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. 317, three. 318.